I give due credit to the authors of this review material that I am about to read and upload for review purposes only. I do not in any way claim ownership to any of it. Definition and concept of taxation. Taxation is the power by which the sovereign, through its law making body, raises revenue to defray the necessary expenses of government. It is merely a way of apportioning the costs of government among those who in some measure are privileged to enjoy its benefits must bear its burden. It is a mode by which government make exactions for revenue in order to support their existence and carry out their legitimate objectives. Taxation may refer to either or both the power to tax or the act of or process by which the taxing power is exercised. In other words, taxation is the inherent power of the sovereign exercised through a legislature to impose burdens upon subjects and objects within its jurisdiction for the purpose of raising revenues to carry out the legitimate objects of government. Purpose of taxation. Number one, primary or revenue purpose, to raise funds or property to enable the state to promote the general welfare and protection of the people. Number two, secondary or non-revenue purposes, sumptuary. A, promotion of general welfare. Taxation may be used as an implement of police power to promote the general welfare of the people. In the case of Lutz versus Araneta, GR number, 7859, December 22, 1955, the Supreme Court upheld the validity of the Sugar Adjustment Act, which imposed a tax on milled sugar since the purpose of the law was to strengthen an industry that is so undeniably vital to the economy, the sugar industry. R. Regulation of activities or industries. Taxes may also be imposed for a regulatory purpose, as for instance, in the rehabilitation and stabilization of a threatened industry which is affected with public interests like the oil industry. Caltech Philippines, Caltech Philippines versus Commission on Audit. Taxation also has a regulatory purpose as in the case of taxes levied on excises or privileges like those imposed on tobacco and alcoholic products or amusement places like nightclubs, cabarets, cockpits. R. Reduction of social inequality. A progressive system of taxation prevents the undue concentration of wealth in the hands of few individuals. Progressivity is based on the principle that those who are able to pay more should shoulder the bigger portion of the tax burden. E. Encourage economic growth. The grant of incentives or exemptions encourage investment thereby stimulating economic activity. P. Protectionism. Protective tariffs and customs duties are imposed as taxes in order to protect important sectors of the economy or local industries, as in the case of foreign importations. Nature and Characteristics of Taxation The nature of the state's power to tax is twofold. It is both an inherent and legislative power. Inherent attribute of sovereignty. The power to tax is an attribute of sovereignty and is inherent in the state. It is a power emanating from necessity because it imposes a necessary burden to preserve the state's sovereignty. Feel guarantee company versus commissioner. It is an essential and inherent attribute of sovereignty, belonging as a matter of right to every independent government without being expressly conferred by the people. Pepsi Cola Bottling Company of the Philippines versus Municipality of Tanwan later. It does not need constitutional conferment. Constitutional provisions do not give rise to the power to tax, but merely impose limitations on what would exercise be an invincible power. Churchill and Tite versus Concepcion, 34 Phil 969. Question Why is the power to tax considered inherent in the sovereign state? Lifted from 2003 bar. Answer. It is considered inherent in a sovereign state because it is a necessary attribute of sovereignty. Without this power, no sovereign state can exist or endure. The power to tax proceeds upon the theory that the existence of a government is a necessity and this power is an essential and inherent attribute of sovereignty belonging as a matter of right to every independent state or government 
no sovereign state can continue to exist without the means to pay its expenses, and that for those means it has the right to compel all citizens and property within its limits to contribute, hence the emergence of power to tax. Legislative in character. It is inherently legislative in nature and character in that the power of taxation shown can only be exercised through the enactment of law. It is, a le it is legislative in nature since it involves the promulgation of laws. The legislature determines the coverage, object, nature, extent, and situs or conis of the tax to be imposed. Such power is exclusively vested in the legislature except where the Constitution provides otherwise. It is based on the principle that taxes are a grant of the people who are taxed, and the grant must be made by the immediate representative of the people, and where the people have laid the power, there it must remain and be exercised. Question. May legislative bodies enact laws to raise revenues in the absence of constitutional provisions granting said body the power to tax? Or power of tax? Explain lifted from 2005 bar. Answer, yes, the constitutional provisions relating to the power of taxation do not operate as grants of the power of taxation to the government, but instead merely constitute a limitation upon a power which would otherwise be practically without limit. Moreover, it is inherent in nature, being an attribute of sovereignty. There is thus no need for a constitutional grant for the state to exercise the power. Question. Is the grant of the power of taxation inherent for both national and local government? Answer, no. It is inherent in national government, but not in the local government unit, since the latter is merely a state agency to carry out in detail the object, objects of the government. The LGU can only impose taxes when it is granted by the A. Constitution, example, LGU's taxation power outside autonomous region, B. Legislation by Congress, Example, LGU's taxation power within the autonomous region, Article 10, Section 20, 1987 Constitution. Scope of legislative power in taxation. Number one, the determination of ask maps. A. Amount of or rate of tax. B. Subjects of taxation, like persons, property, occupation, exercises, or privileges to be taxed. Provided they are within the taxing jurisdiction. K. Kind of tax to be collected. M. Method of collection. This is not exclusive to Congress. A. Apportionment of the tax, whether the tax shall be of general application or limited to a particular locality, or partly general and partly local. P. Purposes of which taxes shall be levied. Levi, levy. Provided they are public purposes. G. Sites of taxation. Number two, the grant of tax exemptions and condonations. Three, the power to specify or provided for administrative as well as judicial remedies. Philippines Petroleum Corporation versus Munas Municipality of Pilila. GR85318. Characteristics of taxation. Cops. C. Comprehensive. It covers persons, businesses, activities, professions, rights, and privileges. U. Unlimited. It is so unlimited in force and searching in extent that courts scarcely venture to declare that it is subject to any restrictions except those that such rest in the discretion of the authority which exercises it. T versus Videogram Regulatory Board. 3. Plenary. It is complete. Under NIRC, the BRM may avail of certain remedies to ensure the collection of taxes. Taxes being the lifeblood of the government that should be collected without unnecessary hindrance, every precaution must be taken not to unduly suppress it. Republic vs. Kagiwa, 536 Skwa, 193. Supreme. It is supreme in so far as the selection of the subject of taxation is concerned, but it does not mean that it is superior to the other inherent powers of the state. Question. Explain the concept of wide spectrum of taxation. Answer. It means that taxation is one that extends to every business, trade, or occupation, to every object of inter industry, use, or enjoyment, and to every spe species of profession. Possession. It imposes a burden which, in case of failure to discharge the same, may be followed by the seizure and confiscation of property after the observance of due process. 
distinction is between the three inherent powers of the state. Authority who exercises the power under taxation, government or its political subdivision, under police power, government or its political subdivision, under eminent domain, government or public service, companies and public utilities. Purpose under taxation, to raise revenue in support of the government, regulation is merely incidental. Under police power, promotion of general welfare through regulations under imminent domain to facilitate the taking of private property for public purpose. Persons affected under taxation upon the community or class of individuals under police power upon community or class of individuals under imminent domain on an individual as the owner of a particular property. Amount of monetary imposition under taxation, no ceiling except inherent limitations. Under police power, limited to the cost of regulation, issuance of license or surveillance. Under imminent domain, no imposition, the owner is paid the fair market value of his property. Benefits received under taxation, protection of a secured organized society. Benefits received from government, no direct benefit. Under police power, Maintenance of healthy economic standard of society, no, di no direct benefit. Under eminent domain, the person receives the fair market value of the property taken from him, direct benefit result. Non-impairment of contracts. Under taxation, tax laws generally do not impair contracts unless government is party to contract granting exemption for a consideration. Under police power, contracts may be impaired. Under imminent domain, contracts may be impaired. Test of validity under taxation must not be contrary to inherent and constitutional limitations. Under police power, must comply with the test on lawful subjects and lawful means. Under imminent domain, must be for public pur purpose and with payment of just compensation. Similarities between taxation, imminent domain, and police power. 1. Their inherent powers of the state. All are necessary attributes to the sovereign. They exist independently of the Constitution. They constitute the three methods by which the state interferes with private rights and property. They presuppose equivalent compensation. The legislature can exercise all three powers. Q. Can police power and taxation cause coexist in one act of the government? Answer is yes. Taxation is no longer envisioned as a measure merely to raise revenue to support the existence of the government. Taxes may be levied with a regulatory purpose to provide a means for the rehabilitation and stabilization of a threatened industry which is affected with public interest as to be within the police power of the state. Caltex Philippines versus Commission on Audit. Thus, the power of taxation may be exercised to implement police power. TU versus PDRAM Regulatory Board. Question. Distinguish taxation from pub police power. Taxation and police power. So, purpose of taxation to, rest rev to raise revenue, amount of exaction, no limit, benefits received, no special or direct benefit is received by the taxpayer, merely general benefit of protection. Non-impairment of contract, contracts may not be impaired. Transfer of property rights, taxes paid become part of public funds. Scope, all persons, property, and exercise says. Police power, purpose, to raise revenue, I mean, sorry, to promote public purpose through regulation, amount of exaction limited to the cost of regulation, issuance of the license or surveillance, benefits received, no direct benefit is received, a health economic standard of society is attained, non-impairment of contracts, contracts may be impaired, transfer of property rights, no transfer but only restraint in its exercise, scope, all person, property, rights and privileges. Taxation is distinguishable from police power as to the means employed to implement these public good goals. Those doctrines that are unique to taxation arose from peculiar considerations such as those specially punitive effects of taxation and the belief that taxes are the lifeblood of the state, yet at the same time it has been 
recognized that taxation may be made the implement of the state's police power. Southern Cross Cement Corporation versus Cement Manufacturers Association of the Philippines. Q. Galaxia Telecommunications Company constructed a telecommunications tower for the purpose of receiving and transmitting cellular communications. Meanwhile, the municipal authorities passed an ordinance entitled an ordinance regulating the establishment of special projects which impose fees to regulate activities particularly related to the construction and maintenance of various structures, certain construction activities of the identified special projects which include cell sites or telecommunication towers. Is the imposition of the fee an exercise of the power of taxation? Answer no. The designation given by the municipal authorities does not decide whether the imposition is proper, properly a license tax or a license fee. The determining factors are the purposes, the purpose and effect of imposition as may be apparent from the provisions of the ordinance. If the generating of revenue is the primary purpose and regulation is merely incidental, the imposition is a tax. But if regulation is the primary purpose, the fact that incidentally revenue is also obtained does not make the imposition a tax. The fees in the ordinance are not impositions on the building or structure itself. Rather, they are impositions on the activities subject to government regulation, such as the installation and construction of the structures. It is primarily regulatory in nature and not primarily revenue raising. While the fees may be may contribute to the revenues of the municipality, this effect is merely incidental. Thus, the fees imposed in the said ordinance are not taxes. Smart Communication versus Municipality of Malbar, Batangas. Q. Revenue Laws RA 6260 on PD 276 were enacted to establish the Coconut Investment Fund and Coconut Consumers Stabilization Fund. These impose levy for every sale of copra. Additional laws were enacted for the management of coconut levy funds, coco levy funds, including the coconut industry code, which provide that the coco levy funds shall be owned by the coconut farmers in their private capacities. In 2000, Executive Order 312 was issued with established Sagib Niugan program. It sought to establish a 1 billion fund by disposing of assets acquired using coco levy funds or assets of entities supported by those funds. To manage the fund, a committee was formed within which engaged the service of a private reputable auditing firm to conduct periodic audits by the majority vote of its members. FDI Bank was also designated as the trustee bank. It suggested that the coco levy funds are closely similar to the social security system funds which have been declared to be not public funds but properties of the SSS members and held merely in trust by the government are the coca levy funds in the nature of taxes and thus can only be used for public purpose? Question. Answer yes. The coca levy funds were raised pursuant to law to support a proper governmental purpose. They were raised with the use of the police and taxing powers of the state for the benefit of the coconut industry and its farmers in general. Unlike ordinary revenue laws, RA6260 and PD276 did not raise money to boost the government's general funds, but to provide means for the rehabilitation and stabilization of a threatened industry. The coconut industry, which is so affected with public interest, as to be within the public police power of the state. The subject laws are akin to the imposed sugar liens. It cannot be likened to SSS law, which collects premium contributions that are not taxes and not for public purpose. The SSS members pay contributions in exchange for insurance protection and benefits like loans, medical or health services. In retirement package, Pambansang Coalition ng mga Samahang magsasaka at manggagawa sa Nyugan versus Executive Sec Secretary, GR numbers 147036-237. Q. On April 23, 1992, RA7432 was passed into law granting senior citizens certain privileges including the 20% sales discount, 
to certain establishments such law also provides that the cost discount granted by these establishments may be claimed as a tax credit or reduction from tax liability. On February 26, 2004, RA 9257 was issued amending RA 7432 which provides that the 20% may be claimed as deduction from the gross income net of VAT if applicable for income tax purposes and from gross sales or gross receipts of the business enterprise concern. For VAT or other percentage tax purposes, petitioners challenge the constitutionality of the tax deduction scheme under RA 9257 and pray that the tax credit treatment of the 20% discount be reinstated. Petitioners proceed that the resolution of this case lies in the determination of whether the illegally mandated 20% senior citizen discount is an exercise of police power or eminent domain. If it is police power, no just compensation is warranted. But if it's an eminent domain, the tax deduction scheme is unconstitutional because it is not a peso for a peso reimbursement of the 20% discount given to senior citizens. Thus, it constitutes taking of private property without payment of just compensation. Is the tax deduction scheme an exercise of police power or the, poli or the power of eminent domain answer? The 20% discount given to senior citizen is a valid exercise of police power. Thus, even if the current law, through its tax deduction scheme, which is which abandoned the tax credit scheme under the previous law, does not provide for a passive for passive reimbursement of the 20% discount given by private establishments, no constitutional infirmity obtains because being a valid exercise of police power, payment of just compensation is not warranted. The 20% discount is intended to improve the welfare of senior citizens who at their age are less likely to be gainfully employed, more prone to illnesses and other disabilities, and thus in need of subsidy in purchasing basic commodities. The discount serves to honor senior citizens who presumably spent the productive years of their lives on contributing to the development and progress of the nation. This distinct cultural Filipino practice of honoring the elderly is an integral part of this law. As to its nature and effects, the 20% discount is a regulation affecting the ability of private establishments to pair their products and services relative to a special class of individuals, senior citizens, for which the Constitution affords preferential concern. Memorial Park versus DSWD. Theory and Basis of Taxation The theories underlying the power of taxations, taxation are 1. Lifeblood theory, necessity theory, benefits protection theory, jurisdiction over subject ma ma objects, jurisdiction over subject and objects. D. Q. Discuss the meaning and the implication of the statement. Taxes are the lifeblood of the government and their prompt and certain availability is an imperious need. Answer, it expresses the underlying basis of taxation, which is governmental necessity, for indeed without taxation, a government can neither exist nor endure. Considering that taxes are the lifeblood of the government in, and in Holmes' memorable metaphor, the, pr the price we pay for civilization, tax laws must be faithfully and strictly implemented. Taxes should be collected promptly. No court shall have the authority to grant an injunction to refrain from to restrain the collection of any international revenue tax, fee, or charge imposed by the NIRC. Manifestations of lifeblood theory. Imposition even in the absence of constitutional grant. States' right to select objects and subjects of taxation. No injunction to enjoin collection of taxes except for a period of 60 days from application to the CTA as an incident of its appellate jurisdiction. Taxes could not be the subject of compensation and set off, subject to certain exemptions. A valid tax may result in destruction of property. The tier behind the exercise of the power to tax emanates from necessity. Without taxes, the government cannot fulfill 
its mandate of promoting the general welfare and well-being of the people, Giroci versus DOE. It is necessary burden to preserve the state's sovereignty and a means to give the citizenry an army to resist aggression, a navy to defend its shore from invasion, a corps of civil servants to serve, public improvements for the enjoyment of the citizenry and those which come within the state's territory, and facilities and protection which a government is supposed to provide. Benefits Protection Theory, Doctrine of Symbiotic Relationship It involves the power of the state to demand and receive taxes based on the reciprocal duties of support and protection between the state and its citizen. Taxes are what we pay for a civilized society. Without taxes, the government would be paralyzed for lack of motive power to activate and operate it. Hence, despite the natural reluctance to surrender part of one's earned income to the taxing authorities, Every person who is able must contribute his share in the running of the government. The government, for its part, is expected to respond in the form of tangible and intangible benefits intended to improve the lives of the people and enhance their material and moral values. CIR vs. Alge, GR number 28896. Special benefits to taxpayers are not required. A person cannot object to or resist the payment of taxes solely because no personal benefits to him can be pointed out arising from the tax. Tax expenses or of government having for their object the interest of all should be borne by everyone and the more man enjoys the advantages of society, the more he ought to hold himself honored in contributing to those expenses. Abacada Guru Party List versus Ermita, GR number 1680-56. Jurisdiction over subjects and objects. It is the country, state, or sovereign that gives protection and has the right to demand payment of taxes with which to finance activities so it could continue to give protection. Taxation is territorial because it is only within the confines of its territory and a country state or sovereign may be given may give protection principles of sound tax system basic principles of sound tax system canons of taxation fat fiscal adequacy a revenue raised must be sufficient to meet government or public expenditures and other public needs Chavez versus Ong Pin. Neither an excess nor a deficiency of revenue vis-a-vis -vis the needs of government would be in keeping with the principle. Administrative feasibility. The tax system should be capable of being effectively administered and enforced with the least inconvenience to the taxpayer. Theoretical justice must take into consideration the taxpayer's ability to pay. Ability to pay theory. Article 6, Section 28, Number 1 of 1987 constitution mandates that the rule on taxation must be uniform and equitable and that the state must evolve a progressive system of taxation. A violation of the principle of a tax sound system may or may not invalidate a tax law. A tax law will retain its validity even if it is not in consonance with the principles of fiscal adequacy and administrative feasibility because the Constitution does not expressly require so. These principles are only designated to make our tax system sound. However, if a tax law runs contrary to the principle of theoretical justice, such violation will render the law unconstitutional, considering that under the Constitution, the rule of taxation should be uniform and equitable. Question, is the VAT law violate violative of the administrative feasibility principle? Answer no. The VAT law is principally aimed to rationalize the system of taxes on goods and services, thus simplifying tax administration making the system more equitable to enable the country to attain economic recovery. Kapatiran ng mga naglilingkod sa pamahalaan versus tan. Is the is the imposition of VAT on tollway operations valid? Answer yes. Administrative feasibility is one of of the canons of sound tax system. Non-observance of the canon, however, will not render a tax imposition invalid.
except to the extent that specific constitutional or statutory limitations are impaired. Thus, even if the imposition of VAT on tollway operations may seem burdensome to implement, it is not necessarily invalid unless some aspect of it is shown to violate any law or the Constitution. Diaz versus Secretary of Finance. Question. Frank Chavez, a taxpayer in Realty Owners Association of the Philippines, Inc., ROWAP, alleged that EO 73 providing for the collection of real property taxes as provided for under Section 21 of PD 464, Real Property Tax Code, is unconstitutional because it accelerated the application of general revision of assessments to January 1, 1987, thereby increasing the real property taxes by 100% to 400%, on improvements and up to 100% on land, which would necessarily lead to confiscation of property. Is the contention of the, Ch of the Chavez and Rob correct? Answer, no. Without EO 73, the basis for collection of real property taxes will still be the 1978 revision of property values. Certainly, to continue collecting real property taxes based on valuations arrived at several years ago, in this regard of the increases in the value of real properties that have occurred since then, it is not in consonance with a sound tax system, fiscal adequacy, which is one of the characteristics of a sound tax system, requires that sources of revenues must be adequate to meet government expenditures and their variation. Chavez versus Ong Pin. Scope and limitation of taxation. Inherent limitations. P I T I E P T I. P public purpose. I inherently legislative. T territorial. I international committee e exemption of government entities agencies and instrumentalities constitutional limitations a provisions directly affecting taxation prohibition against imprisonment for non-payment of all tax article 3 section 20 uniformity and equality of taxation article 6 of section 28 grant by congress of authority to the president to impose tariff rates article 6 section 28 Prohibition against taxation of religious charitable entities and educational entities. Article 6, Section 28. Prohibition against taxation of non-stock, non-profit educational instruction. Majority vote of Congress for grant of tax exemption. Article 6, Section 28. Prohibition on use of tax levied for special purposes. Article 6 of 29. Present veto power and appropriation. Revenue tariff tax. Article 6, Section 27. Non impairment of jurisdiction of the Supreme Court. Article 6, Section 30. Grant of power to the LGUs to create its own sources of revenue. Article 9, Section 5. Origin of revenue and tariff bills. Article 6, Section 24. No appropriation of use or use of public money for religious purposes. Article 6, Section 28. Provisions indirectly affecting taxation. Article 3, 1987 Constitution. Due process. Equal protection. Religious freedom. Non-impairment of obligation of contracts. Freedom of the press. Inherent limitation. Public purpose. Tax is considered for public purpose if it is for the welfare of the nation and or for a greater portion of the population. It affects the area as a community rather than as an individual. It is designed to support the services of the government for some of its recognized objects. Test in determining public purpose. Duty test. Whether the thing to be furthered by the appropriation of public revenue is something which is the duty of the state as a government to provide. Note, the term public purpose is not defined. It is an elastic concept that can be hammered to fit modern standard. Jurisprudence states that public purpose should be given a broad interpretation. It does not only pertain to those purposes which are traditionally viewed as essentially government functions, such as building roads and delivery of basic services, but also includes those purposes designed to promote social justice. This, thus, public money may now be used for the relocation of illegal settlers, low-cost housing, and urban agrarian reform, planters products, versus Fertifil Corporation. Number two, promotion of general welfare test. Whether the proceeds of the tax will directly promote the welfare of the community in equal measure. When a tax law is only amassed to exact funds from the public, when its true intent is to give undue benefit advantage to a private enterprise, that law will not satisfy the requirement of public purpose. Planters Product versus Fertifil Corporation. 
determination when enacted tax law is for public purpose. It, it lies in the Congress. However, this will not prevent the court from questioning the propriety of such statute on the ground that the law enacted is not for public purpose. But once it is settled that the law is for public purpose, the court may no longer inquire into the wisdom, expediency, or necessity of such tax measure. Note, if the tax measure is not for public purpose, the act amounts to confiscation of property. Principles relative to public purpose. Tax revenue must not be used for purely private purposes or for the exclusive benefit of private per persons. Number two, inequalities resulting from the singling out of one particular class for taxation or exemption infringe no constitutional limitation because the legislature is free to select the subjects of taxation. Note, legislature is not required to adopt a policy of all for not or none, for the Congress has the power to select the object of taxation. Lutz versus Araneda, GRL 7859. Number three, an individual taxpayer need not derive direct benefits from the tax. Four, public purpose is continually expanding. Areas formerly left to private initiative now lose their boundaries and may be undertaken by the government if it is to meet the increasing social challenges of times. Five, the public purpose of tax law must exist at the time of its enactment, Pascal versus Secretary of Public Works. Question, are subsequent laws which convert a public fund to private properties valid? Answer, no. Taxes could be exacted only for public purposes. They cannot be declared private properties of individuals, although such individuals fall within a distinct group of persons. Pambansang Coalition ng mga samahang magsasaka at magagawa. San Yugan versus Executive Secretary, GR147036 until 37. Question. Lutz assailed the constitutionality of Sections 2, 3, and of CA 567, which provided for an increase of the existing tax on the manufacture of sugar. Lutz alleged such tax as unconstitutional and void for not being levied for a public purpose but for the aid and support of the sugar industry exclusively. Is the tax law increasing the existing tax on the manufacture of sugar valid? Answer yes. The protection and promotion of the sugar industry is a matter of public concern. The legislature may determine within reasonable bounds what is necessary for its protection and expedient for its promotion. Legislative discretion must be allowed full play, subject only to the test of reasonableness. If objective and methods alike are constitutionally valid, there is no reason why the state may not levy taxes to raise funds for their prosecution and attainment. Taxation may be made to implement the tax police, police power. Lutz versus Araneta. Question, is the tax imposed on the sale, lease, or disposition of videograms for public purpose? Yes, such tax is imposed primarily for answering the need for regulating the video industry, particularly because of the rampant film piracy, the flagrant violation of intellectual property rights, and the proliferation of pornographic videotapes. While the direct beneficiary of said imposition is the movie industry, the citizens are held to be its indirect beneficiaries. TO versus Videogram. GR 75697. Number two, inherently legislative general rule. The power to tax is exclusively vested in the legislative body, being inherent in nature. Hence, it may not be delegated. The legata potestas non potest delegari. The powers which Congress is prohibited from delegating are those which are strictly or inherently and exclusively legislative. Purely legislative power which can never be delegated, has been described as the authority to make a complete law, complete as to the time when it shall take effect and to whom it shall be applicable, and to determine the expediency of its enactment. Abakada Guru Partilis versus Honor Honorable Executive Secretary. It cannot be delegated without infringing upon the theory of separations, separation of powers. Pepsi-Cola Bottling Company versus Municipal Polity of Tanwan. Non delegable legislative powers. Selection of subject to be taxed. Determination of purposes for which taxes shall be levied. Fixing of the rates, amount of taxation, side of tax, kind of tax, exemptions. 
Delegation to local government refers to the power of LGU to create its own sources of revenue and to levy taxes, fees, and charges. Article 10, Section 5, 1987, Constitution. Note, Article 10, Section 5 of the Constitution does not change the doctrine that municipal corporations do not possess inherent powers of taxation. What it does is to confer municipal corporations a general power to levy taxes and otherwise create sources of revenue, and they no longer have to wait for a statutory grant of these powers and the power of the legislative authority relative to the fiscal powers of local governments has been reduced to the authority to impose limitations on municipal powers. Thus, in interpreting statutory provisions on municipal fiscal powers, doubts will be resolved in favor of municipal corporations. Quezon City et al. versus ABS-CBN Broadcasting Corp. Number two, delegation to the president. The authority of the president to fix tariff rights, import or export quotas, tonnage, and warfage dues to other duties and impose Article 6, Section 28, Number 2, 1987 Constitution. Note, when Congress tasked the president or his or her alter egos to impose safeguards measures under the delineated condition, the president or the alter egos may be properly deemed as agents of Congress to perform an act that inherently belongs as a matter of right to the legislature. It is basic agency law that the agent may not act beyond the specifically delegated powers or disregard the restrictions imposed by the principal Southern Cross Cement Corporation versus Cement Manufacturers. Number three, delegation to administrative agencies. When the delegation relates merely to administrative implementation that may call for some degree of discretionary powers, under sufficient standards expressed by law, Cervantes v. Auditor General, DRL 4043, or implied from the policy and purpose of the Act, Maceda v. Makarai. No, technically, this does not amount to a delegation of the power to tax because the questions which should be determined by Congress are already answered by Congress before the tax law leaves Congress. Question. In order to raise revenue for the repair and maintenance of the newly constructed City Hall of Makati, the City Mayor ordered the collection of one peso called elevator tax every time a person rides any of the high-tech elevators in the City Hall during the hours of 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. Is the imposition of elevator tax valid? Lifted from 2003 bar. No. The imposition of a tax fee or ch charge or the generation of revenue under the local government code shall be exercised by the Sangunian of the LGU concerned to an appropriate ordinance, Section 132, LGC. The city mayor alone could not order the collection of the tax. As such, the elevator tax is an invalid imposition. Question. The municipality of Malolos passed an ordinance imposing a tax on any sale or transfer of real property located within the municipality at a rate of one-fourth or one percent of the total consideration of the transaction, X sold a parcel of land in Malolos, which he inherited from his deceased parents, and refused to pay the aforesaid tax. He insisted he instead filed a appropriate case asking that the ordinance be declared null and void, since such a tax can only be collected by the national government, as in fact he has paid the BIR the required capital gains tax. The municipality counter that under the constitution, each local government is vested with the power of, to create its own sources of revenue and to levy taxes, and it imposed the subject tax in the exercise of said constitution authority, resolve the controversy. Answer. The ordinance is void. The LGC only allows provinces and cities to impose a tax on transfer of ownership of real property, section 135 and 153 of the LGC. Municipalities are prohibited from imposing said tax that provinces are specifically authorized to levy. While it is true that the Constitution has given broad powers of taxation to LGUs, this delegation, however, is subject to such limitations as may be provided by law. Article 10, section 5, 1987 Constitution. Question. RA 9337, the VAT Reform Act, provides that the President, upon the recommendation of the Secretary of Finance, shall effective January 1, 2006, raise the rate of value-added tax to 12% after any of the following conditions have been satisfied. 
value added tax collection as a percentage of gross domestic product, GDP, of the previous year exceeds 2 and 4 fifth percent or national government deficit as the percentage of GDP of the previous year exceeds 1 and 1 half percent. Was there an invalid delegation of legislative power? Answer, no. There is no undue to delegation of legislative power, but only of the discretion as to the execution of the law. This is constitutionally permissible. Congress did not abdicate its function or unduly delegate power when it describes what job must be done, who must do it, and what is the scope of his authority. The Secretary of Finance in this case becomes merely the agent of the legislative department to determine and declare the event upon which its express will is to take effect. The President cannot set aside the findings of the Secretary of Finance who is not under the conditions acting as her alter ego or subordinate. Territorial General rule, the taxing power of a country is limited to persons and property within the subject to its jurisdiction. Reasons. Taxation is an act of sovereignty which could only be exercised within the country's territorial limits. Number two. This is based on the theory that taxes are paid for the protection and services provided for the taxing authority which could not be provided outside the territorial boundaries of the taxing state. Exceptions. Where tax laws operate outside territorial jurisdiction. Example. Taxation of resident citizens on their incomes derived abroad. Number two. Where tax laws do not operate within the territorial jurisdiction of the state when exempted from treaty obligation or when exempted by international committee. Refer to discussion on situs of taxation. Number four, international committee. It refers to the respect recorded by nations to each other because they are sovereign equals. Thus, the property or income of a foreign state may not be the subject of taxation by another state. International committee as a limitation on the power to tax. The Constitution expressly adopted the generally accepted principles of international law as part of the law of the land. Thus, a state must recognize such generally accepted tenets of international law that limit the authority of the government to effectively impose taxes upon a sovereign state and its instrumentalities. Reasons Number 1. Par in parem non habet imperium. As between equals, there is no sovereign doctrine of sovereign equality. Equality. Number two, the concept that when a foreign sovereign enters the territorial jurisdiction of another, it does not subject itself to the jurisdiction of the other. Number three, the rule of international law that a foreign government may not be sued without its consent, so that it is useless to impose a tax which could not be collected. Exemption from taxation of government entities. General rule, the government is exempt from tax. Reason. Otherwise, we would be taking money from one pocket and putting it in another. Board of Assessment, Pills of Laguna vs. CTA. Exception. When it chooses to tax itself, nothing prevents Congress from decreeing that even instrumentalities or agencies of the government performing government functions may be subject to tax, where it is done precisely to fulfill a constitutional mandate and national policy no one can doubt is wisdom. MCIAA versus Marcos. Government may tax itself. Since sovereignty is absolute and taxation, taxation is an act of high sovereignty, the state, if so minded, could tax itself, including its political subdivision, Maceda versus Macarai. National government is exempt from local taxation. If the taxing authority is the LGU RA76, 7160 expressly prohibits LGUs from levying tax on the national government, its agencies and instrumentalities, and other LGUs. In Manila International Airport Authority v. CA, GR No. 155650, MIA or MIAA's airport lands and buildings are exempt from real estate tax imposed by local governments, being an instrumentality of the national government. It is exempt from local taxation. Also, the real properties of MIAA are owned by the Republic of the Philippines and thus exempt from real estate tax. Agency of the government. It refers to any of the various units of the government, including a department, bureau, office, instrumentality, or government-owned or controlled corporation, or a local government, or a distinct unit therein. Taxability of Agencies of Government 
Number one, performing governmental functions, tax exempt unless expressly taxed. Number two, performing proprietary function, subject to tax and unless expressly exempted. Instrumentality of the government, it refers to any agency or national government not integrated within the department framework, vested with special functions or jurisdiction by law, endowed with some of some if not all corporate powers, administering special funds, and enjoying operational autonomy usually through charter. Taxability of instrumentalities of government. A government instrumentality falls under Section 133 of the LGC, which states that Section 133 common limitations on the taxing powers of local government units unless otherwise provided therein. The exercise of the taxing powers of provinces, cities, municipalities, and barangays shall not extend to the levy of the following taxes, fees, or charges of any kind on the national government, its agencies and instrumentalities, and local government units. Q. LLL is a government instrumentality created by executive order to be primarily responsible for integrating and directing all reclamation projects for the national government. It was not organized as a stock or non-stock corporation, nor was it intended to operate commercially and compete in the private market. By virtue of its mandate, LLL reclaimed several portions of the foreshore and offshore areas of Manila Bay, some of which were within the territorial jurisdiction of Q City. Certificates of title to reclaim properties in Q City were issued in the name of LLL in 2008. In 2014, Q City issued warrants to of levy on said reclaimed properties of LLL based on the assessment for delinquent property taxes for the years 2010 to 2013. A. Are the reclaimed properties registered in the name of LLL subject to real property tax? Letter B question. Will your answer be the same in A. If from 2010 to the present time, LLL is leasing portions of the reclaimed properties for the establishment and use of popular fast food restaurants, J Burgers, G Pizza, and K Chicken, lifted from 2015 bar. Answer of letter A. The reclaimed properties are not subject to real property tax because LLL is a government instrumentality. Under the law, Real property owned by the public of the Philippines is exempt from real property tax unless the beneficial use thereof has been granted to a taxable person. Section 234 of the LGC. When the title of the real property is transferred to LLL, the Republic remains the owner of the real property. Thus, such arrangement does not result in the loss of tax exemption. Republic of the Philippines represented by the Re Philippine Reclamation Authority versus City of Parnake. Letter B. Answer. As a, no, as a rule, properties owned by Republic of the Philippines are exempt from real property tax except when beneficial use thereof has been granted for consideration or otherwise to a taxable person. When LLL leases out portions of the reclaimed properties to taxable entities such as popular fast food restaurants, the reclaimed properties are subject to real property tax. Q. Is PESA a government instrumentality or a DOCC? Is it exempt from real property taxation? Answer. PESA is an instrumentality of the government. It is not integrated within the department framework, but is an agency attached to the Department of Trade and Industry. PESA is also vested with special functions of jurisdiction by law. Congress created the PESA to operate, administer, manage, and develop special economic zones in the Philippines. Although a body corporate vested with some corporate powers, the PESA is not the GOCC that is taxable for real property taxes because it was not organized as stock or non-stock corporation. Being an instrumentality of the national government, it cannot be taxed by LGUs. Q. The Lucena Fishing Port Complex, LFPC, is one of the fishery in infrastructure projects undertaken by the national government under the nationwide fish port package. The Philippine Fisheries Development Authority, PFDA, was created with functions and powers to manage, operate, and develop the Nabotas Fishing Port Complex and such other fishing port complexes that may be established by the authority. Pursuant thereto, PDA PFD took over the management and operation in LFPC in February 1992. 
On October 26, 1999, the city government of Lucena demanded payment of realty taxes on the LFPC property. Is PFDA liable for the real property tax assessed on the Lucena Fishing Port Complex? Answer, no. The exercise of the taxing power of LGUs is subject to the limitations enumerated in Section 133 of the LGC. Under Section 133 of the LGC, LGUs have no power to tax instrumentalities of the national government like the PFDA. Thus, PFDA is not liable to pay real property tax except those portions which are leased to private persons or entities. Also, as property of public dominion, the Lucena Fishing Port Complex is owned by the Republic of the Philippines and thus exempt from real estate tax. Philippine Fishery Development Authority versus Central Board of Assessment. Government Owned and Controlled Corporation, GOCC. It refers to any agency organized as a stock or non-stock corporation, vested with functions relating to public needs, whether government or proprietary in nature, and owned by the government directly or through its instrumentalities, either wholly or where applicable, as in the case of stock corporations, to the extent of at least 51% of its capital stock. Note, government instrumentality may include a GOCC, and there may be instrumentality that does not qualify as GOCC. Taxability of GOCCs. GOCCs perform proprietary functions, hence they are subject to taxation. However, certain corporations have been granted exemption under Section 27C of RA 8424 as amended by RA 9337, which took effect on July 1, 2005. 1. Government Service Insurance System, GISIS, Social Security System, SSS, 3. Philippine Health Insurance, PHIC. Number 4. Philippine Charity Sweepstakes, Office, PCSO. Constitutional limitations, taxation being inherent in sovereignty, need not be clothed with any constitutional authority for it to be exercised by the sovereign state. Instead, constitutional provisions are meant and intended more to regulate and define rather than to grant the power emanating therefrom. Provisions directly affecting taxation. Number one, prohibition against imprisonment for non-payment of poll tax. Basis, no person shall be imprisoned for debt or non-payment of a poll tax. Article 3, Section 20. A poll tax is one levied on persons who are residents within the territory of the taxing authority without regard to their property, business, or occupation. Thus, only the basic community tax under the LGC could qualify as a poll tax and the non-payment of other additional taxes imposed not being in the nature of poll taxes may validly be subjected by law to imprisonment. In other words, while a person may not be imprisoned for non-payment of a cedula or poll tax, he may be imprisoned for non-payment of other kinds of taxes where the laws are expressly provide. Number two, uniformity and equality of taxation. Basis, the rule of taxation shall be uniform and equitable. The Congress shall evolve a progressive system of taxation. Explain the following concepts in taxation. Number one, uniformity. Number two, equitability. And number three, equality. Uniformity, it means that all taxable articles or kinds of property of the same class shall be taxed at the same rate. A tax is considered uniform when it operates with the same force and effect in every place where the subject is found. Different articles may be taxed at different amounts, provided that the rate is uniform on the same class everywhere with all people at all times. Equitability. Taxation is said to be equitable when its burden falls on those better able to pay. Equality. It is accomplished when the burden of the tax falls equally and impartially upon all the persons and property subject to it. Explain the requirement of uniformity as a limitation in the imposition and or collection of taxes. Answer. Uniformity in the imposition and or collection of taxes means that all taxable articles or kinds of property of the same class shall be taxed at the same rate. The requirement of uniformity is complied with when the tax operates with the same force and effect in every place where the subject of it is found, Churchill and Tate versus Concepcion. Different articles may be taxed at different amounts, provided that the rate is uniform on the same class everywhere with 
all people at all times. Accordingly, singling out one particular class for taxation purposes does not infringe the requirement of uniformity.